so covering, we're making our way back to Tremaine Edmonds, but we decided to go over the 2019 draft and seeing the players that were drafted around the players that the Bills took, and did they win, and were they a better fit for what the Buffalo Bills are trying to do philosophy, uh, right. offensive and defensive philosophy? Right. We've talked about this before where, you know, the Bills have a very – very fascinating way of approaching who they're interested in the draft and it can be a surprise a lot of times um and one of the things that we've noticed is that they seem to love getting the best athletes but in college football everybody you know the big schools normally have the best athletes they do they find a way to grab the best athletes off these not smaller schools but you know not clemson not auburn not you know, like they stay away from those major programs because I think those major programs are actually harder to scout. They are because you have so much talent that's surrounding them. The Bills want talent that is not maxed out, mm-hmm. that's versatile. I think undisputable talent is a good way to put that, right? Like if you're watching Clemson and you're watching the Clemson defensive line, you're like, damn, this Shaq Lawson can really move. Yeah, Shaq Lawson doesn't really move all that well, but you look across the defensive tackles and they're all first round picks. And you really have to say, all right, what was the straw that was stirring the drink here? Was it Shaq Lawson or was he productive because there were four got two bodies soaking up four offensive linemen in the middle? It's harder to scout those bigger schools because they're just better, they're better talented kids. What? So, Paul, it sounds to me a lot like, you know, you, t- you want to talk about guys that are surrounded by talent. You just mentioned Shaq Lawson. You guys are surrounded by talent. You can't really tell the talent of that guy, which then you you have the flip side of that, which like a Kyle Doug. Yeah. The guy that has n- really nothing around it and just dominating everybody. you got to question the fact is, you know, d- does he have the ability at the next level to do the same things he's doing? We just talked about Ed Oliver. He went to Houston. I don't remember a lot of guys getting drafted out of Houston. Right. So you had you had a chance to see how he plays against top competition when it's just him. People are focusing on him. You talked about, and I can't believe this name didn't even come to mind for us, Khalil Mack. Oh, yeah. What a great How many yeah, times was he getting doubled and triple teamed at, at University of Buffalo and then – And still was super productive. And, and he's now he's still productive in the NFL. Right. So uh, you, you roll the dice with a lot of these guys, but it's harder to see – those horses at the – and then you look at – and then obviously there's a flip side of this. I know I'm just rambling. You look at a – Yeah, we're four minutes – three minutes into an episode. Yeah. We have yet to talk about a play. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, but then you look at a Tredavious White. Went to LSU. Yeah. Was a very productive player at LSU. Had horses around him, Jamal Adams. Yeah. Sure. But still is a horse. Right. So where do you draw but, the and line? We're, we're not talking about a very good LSU team. I th- mm. I th- they weren't very good there. They're always in the top ten. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> to get to the format of the episode, we're going to look at the player they drafted, the player in the same position drafted ahead, and the player in the same position drafted behind, and see, did the Bills, you know, where where do they sit? Did they win? Did they lose? Uh, so far from what we know. So the easy one is the Jets. God, it's the, the same thing happened with that Oliver. The Jets drafted a DT after Oliver. Here, the Jets drafted a quarterback before the Bills. So weird. Sam Darnold, and then Josh Rosen. So, Sam Darnold versus Josh Allen. We have to put an asterisk next to it. To Rosen? No, we have to put an asterisk next to it. Because who was drafted after Rosen? Jackson. Okay. So, we we have to kind of take the, the, the Allen pick with a grain of salt. However, okay. when we calculate the fact that he went to Greg Roman, that's why Jackson is what he is. Yeah. He's a phenomenal athlete, great quarterback, but Greg Roman is giving him the tools around him to be successful. There's, there's, Allen's trying to fit into this offense. Yeah, there's no shame in in what Baltimore's doing. They're just they're doing what New England often does is we're just gonna utilize your strength. That's, that's it. You run the football as a quarterback really well, so we're just literally going to, that's going to be our money. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let's not play around. Let's not worry about development. Let's just, you'll develop by winning. Yes. That's it. Yes. You'll develop by winning. This is who you are. This is the best athlete you can be. Let's just go do that. Yeah. But I, your point is very well put with Allen. It's, 
they're trying to put him in a system that typically I, I wouldn't have thought Allen would be made for a system like this. Coming out of Wyoming, this, that's not the kid that I would have said. You know, oh, quick, short, underneath passes? Let's draft the guy who can throw at 80 yards. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, but if then, if, then if you go back to your original argument with Rose being taken after him, Darnold being taken before him, I think Darnold fits into the Bills' offense better than Allen does right now. Right now. Now, if you guys want to hate on that, give me some hate mail. That's that's fine. That's, but what I'm saying is, Darnold coming out with more polish now. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of times we hear pro ready is just not, it's just, it's nonsense. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of pro ready is just, it's just jargon. Rosen was more pro ready than all of them. I think, I think Allen fits better in the Geese's offense than Rosen and Darnold does. 100% does. <laughs> If you had to ask me, of those, of those four quarterbacks, which one would you want to put in the Earnhardt Perkins system? It is Dalton all day long. It is. All day, I'm sorry, no, Dal- Darnold all day Darnold. long. It is Darnold all day long. All day. Where's Even Baker? though he takes a, a year to get rid of the football. <laughs> I love how Baker goes to kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, right, I think Allen... Allen has a better opportunity to develop, even though he's with a defensive head coach. We talked about this before on another episode a long time ago. You take a look at the quarterbacks who have developed in the last decade, oftentimes they're with you know, former offensive head yes. coaches. Yes. That's, that's the way it is. So <clears throat> did the Bills win with Allen versus Darnold? Short term, I still think they do, right? Because the organization's a mess in, in New York. That's the, and you, but you can't put that against Darnold. The organization is a dumpster fire. So, are you willing to call this one a push? I would push it. Because I think Darnold is a better pure thrower than Allen. Because and I would have loved, oh yeah, I would have loved to see the reverse. Like, if Allen went three and the, the Bills took Darnold, I would have loved to have seen that transition. Because Allen, to me, coming from a small school, going to New York City, mm. that to me was, because you look at Allen here, it's like he's home. Yeah. You know what I mean? You look at, um, Very comfortable. and then you see USC coming to Buffalo. He probably would have had a little bit of adjustment period, but not on the field. I think Darnold in the Earnhardt Perkins system with Dable would have been a little bit different. Well, and, and faster. And, I think in, it would have been faster. In fairness, Dable was was new as an offensive coordinator when Allen was drafted. So yeah. it's not like we it's not like we really were a hundred percent in on what the system was gonna be. We didn't know. They just lost yeah. they just fired yeah. Dennison. We didn't really know what the offensive system was gonna be. You put Gase with Allen in New York City with all that speed, and then add Le'Veon Bell. Now, can you imagine if Darnold could run in New York? That's a big thing that misses in their game. Yeah, they they need a little bit more mobility. Yeah, but so, you could say the same thing about Buffalo. They need they need the mobility and no wide receivers. You need you needed to move the football otherwise. Yeah. So, I w- I would push it. I would I would call it a push. Okay. Because I think both teams won out. We haven't seen enough yet. Okay. Allen versus Rosen is a no-brainer, so we're just going to move past that. Allen versus Jackson. Mm Mm-hmm. Talk about an MVP. We're talking about MVP, but it's apples and oranges as far as the offensive philosophies that we've already discussed. Okay, so let's look at it this way, right? Let's look two years down the road. Yes. Is Lamar Jackson still an MVP quarterback? Is, Is Roman still there? That's a lot of factors going into it. If Roman is not there, I don't know. That's that's a good question because Roman got fired here because Rex knew he was on the hot seat. And what do you do? You, you take fight, the coordinator. You, you take the coordinator out who's likely going to replace you. I mean, that's that's what you do. He's right? got head coaching, Rex did. you know, uh, you know, opportunity. Roman has has a, had coaching opportunities. Um, the Greg Roman offense, as we have stated, very heavily predicated on the run and with a mobile quarterback. We saw how it worked in San Francisco mm-hmm. with Colin Kaepernick. Mm-hmm. Now, they were dy- they were dynamite. He only threw fastballs. That's why he's the I, – I, th- I think he's he's different from Jackson. Jackson's a better athlete than Kaepernick was. Yeah, I agree with that. But the arm that. that Kaepernick had is better than Jackson. Without a doubt. These are my opinions. Now. These aren't gospel. I'm just trying to tell everybody. But we saw how that system worked where the threat of the run was so huge. And then you have Frank Gore there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a couple other running backs there as well. But now you have like a three-headed monster. And then they had Vernon Davis. What, what, what does Baltimore have? They have a three-headed monster and mm-hmm. tight ends. Right. So a lot of similarities. But if you put 
Jackson with Dable, I don't think you get the same result. I don't think you get an MVP. I yeah, no, I'm, I I agree with you there. If you put Allen with Roman, do you get an MVP? I don't think so. I either. don't think so either. That's the thing. Yeah, I, I so it's completely tailored to Jackson's <clears throat> strengths. Yeah, I think I think acquiring Jackson forced them into having to draw a line in the sand for <laughs> how deep they were willing to go down that rabbit hole, and they said, "We're all in. It's it's going to work." Or we're going to be drafting in the top, uh, top of the league. <laughs> and plus, they were in salary cap jail. Like they, they didn't have a choice but to trust in. They, they, they needed, they needed this to work. Yeah, they just, they just needed it to work. I think we saw the beginning of something, and this episode would probably get buried by the time it happens or comes to fruition. I don't see Jackson seeing a second contract in Baltimore. Uh, I'm inclined to agree with you on that because I just, I just keep, I keep seeing shades of RG three. You know, like it just scares the hell out of me. And, we, and truthfully, we don't like Kaepernick is the next comparable. You know, the next, the last true running quarterback was Kaepernick. I mean, it's really that's the truth. Mm-hmm. And we don't know how his career would have played out because it ended pretty abruptly. So we don't know the longevity. We yeah. don't. We're we're going off of RG three who played at FedEx Field, which I mean, which, which, where Everyone dreams have been going to die for the last fifteen years, and that we don't really know what the longevity is. I, I'm assuming that it's not. It, this isn't sustainable, but we could be totally wrong in that. The, the fact is, we simply don't know because of the defensive, the, the offensive philosophies that are different. Because of the, I mean, you could say that Allen and Jackson are probably two of the top. Five most athletic quarterbacks in the NFL right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree with that. The thing that gets me, I would rather compare Allen to Watson rather than to Jackson because okay. you're talking about another quarterback yeah. who is highly athletic, highly mobile, good arm, not not Allen's arm, but a good arm mm-hmm. who's playing in an Earnhardt Perkins system. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this. You made the comparison to Watson, which I do agree with, right? Yeah. So would you say that Allen is – the perfect compromise between Lamar Jackson and Sam Darnold. Is he is he the compromise player? Like, you want a player who's really mobile. Well, you got to talk about Lamar Jackson. Well, we need somebody who can still throw. Well, if you want somebody who can throw, that's Darnold. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> we, need, we, need so you're saying he's multiple, we need somebody without multiple head injuries. Okay, well, that sounds like we're landing on Josh Allen. <laughs> Right, you got to right. get him in there. But it's but again, you look at it and say what they what way. they did was they landed at the at the the do anything athlete at the quarterback position. He can throw. He's mobile, which is again what we saw with Oliver. He can play DT. He can play defensive end. He's the do anything athlete. You Smaller at, school. You look at Cody Ford. He can play guard. He can play. He truthfully can play both tackle positions. Hold your throw up. Just hear me out. He truthfully could probably play both tackle positions. He yeah. is an athletic guy, yes. right? It's not that he's not athletic. He is an athletic guy. Um, the, I think the speed and strength of, of NFL players surprised him quite a bit. Of Oliver? No, no, no. Oh. Of, of Ford. I think, okay, okay. Yeah. I think speed and power surprised him a little bit of what he was in. Yes. But the fact still remains that Oliver was the do-anything player. Allen, compared to the other quarterbacks, is the do-anything player. You're not putting yourself in a box. So is this the trend? Let's talk about Edmonds. Oh, here we go. Right? Okay. So it's so amazing that they got they got they got Oliver and Allen from smaller schools, mm-hmm. guys who were not surrounded with a lot of talent, right. but they had a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. So we all know Jermaine Edmonds went at 16. It's the third one. It's the third song. Oh, you want to do this as a three-parter? Yeah. Hey, let's stretch this bad boy out. See you boys. See you boys tomorrow. <laughs>